Hello and welcome to another episode of the Mountain West Insider Podcast. And today I am thrilled to be joined by my DTF podcast co-host, the one and only Terrence Oglesby, who is apparently now on the Mountain West beat. Uh, he is going to be calling Wednesday night's game between Colorado State and Nevada. Last week he had, uh, it was Boise State and, no, it was, yeah, you had Boise State and St. Mary's. You had Utah State yeah. and New Mexico. And you have another game coming up where you'll be uh, heading back to Reno. Is that correct? I'll be, I'll be in Vegas, Nevada right. at UNLV. All right. So, so you, a mini rivalry. The battle, the battle for Nevada. The battle, battle, for Nevada. the battle for Nevada, not Nevada, Nevada. It's sure not Nevada. Nevada. It's Nevada. Make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, but I know you're a big fan of this league and you're kind of immersed in it and you're probably watching more film than anybody uh, on this conference overall. Um, and before we kind of get into the specific teams and, and where you stand on this league, just big picture. I know you've kind of we talked about this off the air. You're kind of into this idea that has been pitched by Leon Rice. It was mentioned by Richard Patino last time we had him on the show here. Um, the Mountain West, the Big East, they could be – there's a little bit of similarities there on the opposite coasts. Yeah, there are. And the support for basketball is awesome. Like the entire league loves basketball. It's funded. You know, I, I've been hearing where the Big East is anywhere between 2 and $3 million. The Mountain West for NIL money, the Mountain West isn't that far off. Crowd support's incredible. I mean, whether you look at the pit at uh, New Mexico, you go up to Boise State, their crowd gets after it. Uh, we'll see how it goes today at Nevada, but there's a lot of there's a lot of excitement around this program. Lost a few in a row, but the excitement still exists. It's uh, it's a league where all the home venues are exactly what the Pac-12 wishes they had, because by and large, like there's no team in LA. I mean, they have a Las Vegas team, but these are mid-populated towns or cities that everything revolves around their college. So they're able to really generate some momentum. And when kids come to visit or young men come to visit, there's, I mean, the campuses are awesome. The coaches are really good. And guys are staying because of how well they're treated. Like this this league is a lot of fun. But was it DeCourcy has six teams in uh, from the Mountain West right now? Uh, the league is that good. And last year we were talking about three, four, five bid. Mountain West, I, it wouldn't make me angry at all if this league got six teams. Uh, I think five is more likely, but this this league is really good. And just on a player-to-player -player basis, it's better this year than it was last year from top to bottom. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. I think that there are six teams after UNLV's uh, loss last night to Air Force. I think there are six teams that are going to be in the mix um, I think that when push comes to shove and everything shakes out, you're probably going to get five of those six in, um, yeah. and one will end up on the wrong side, uh, of the bubble. Um, I don't think there's any thing to be disappointed by. If you can get five teams in from the, no. uh, the mountain West, look, I know you're an ACC guy and I don't want to drag the ACC too much, but that's, that would be right on par with what the ACC is getting, which is kind of thought of as a, a more general basketball powerhouse conference. Um, I do just want you to compare, like, look, you've played in the ACC. You've played in big road venues. Uh, you've called games in, in all over the country at this point. How do places like the Pit and places like Boise State and some of these other Mountain West venues compare to, uh, to some of the more renowned college basketball venues? The, the venues I have been in, I'm going to just like Boise, been to Boise a few times, been to the pit, going to Nevada today. Uh, they're very good, and they've made upgrades without losing their character. Goodman had the pit at 14 the other day. It's hardest places to play in college basketball. I think that was four or five spots too low. I think that the pit is a top 10 venue in college basketball. Um, when it comes to all those things, they're, they're not as big outside of the pit, but it seems like the character is certainly there. And they've made a lot of these modern – uh, what's the renovations without losing their character. That's the thing that stuck out to me about the pit. Uh, Boise has a place that it feels like the fans are sitting on top of you. It's a great atmosphere. When it comes to um, – it's not as grandiose as, like, the Dean, the Dean Dome at North Carolina. It's not as big, but I, I would say – it's a tad smaller. It's the perfect size for the city in which they're in. It, it, pretty much every one of the teams. And it can really generate momentum. That's what I would say about the venues. Like, if you're good in the Mountain West, people are going to show. 
You're and even if sales. you're not, yeah. you're going to get, it's, you're not going to have a hard time selling out. That's kind of where it stands as far as venues are concerned, because people want to cheer for these teams. Yeah. And That's honestly, like, I think you need that, right? I think it's better to have a building that might be a little bit too small for the number of people that want to go than a building that is too big for your fan base. It is better to have, let's just say 10,000 people want tickets to a game that fits 8,000 than it is to have 12,000 people go to a game in a building that holds 20,000. It's just yeah, it's small, it's Texas. intimate, it's loud, it's sweaty, it's hot. Like the, the thing about the pit that that everybody loves is um, – it, it the 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 character like you mentioned you got to walk down to get in and you got the tunnels where people try to roll the balls up but it just kind of holds in that sound because everybody is piled in and jam packed on top of each other which frankly is what you see with like Cameron Indoor Stadium with is what you see with Fog Allen Fieldhouse it's what you see with Gamble Pavilion all these great on campus venues you just pack as many people as possible in the building that's not big enough to fit them that's what college yeah, basketball is and, and the pit there's nowhere to go. Like once you get down there, there's nowhere to go. You can go up a giant tunnel to use the bathroom. I'm not gonna lie, Dosh, you can cut this if you want to, but like I was eat, eat every place I go that's new, I try to go and eat local just because like I love food. I love going to see where it's at. Everything in Albuquerque is red sauce or green sauce. And I went with the red sauce. And hey man, I'm from the southeast. Like I'm not used to everything spicy, but I went with it. Man, that that mile hike up the freaking hill, <laughs> my 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 intestinal tract was a war zone. Like, it was unbelievable. Like, having to walk back up there, I was struggling. But, man, what an atmosphere. Holly Holmes sat right beside me, who's a former UFC champion. She's like three rows behind me. Albuquerque's a cool place. That pit was – that's a special thing. There's nowhere to go. So, it really feels like everybody's right there on top of you. It's not tiered off. It's once you set foot where the seats are, it's straight down to the court. It is really cool. All right. So, let's talk about the league. Let's talk about the actual basketball um, I'm going to just throw some questions at you and I want you to, to kind of break it down. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, try to make you a okay. little bit uncomfortable. See if you can have some fun with this. All right. I'm going to start. I'm you never this. uncomfortable. Oh yeah. I just I talked about, I just talked about my intestinal tract in New Mexico. <laughs> I, know. I know. I'm never uncomfortable. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm going to start you out with this. Uh, Donovan Dent or Isaiah Stevens, you're starting a team that's going to try to make a run in the NCAA tournament. Who are you taking and why? This year? This year. Yes. Uh, Isaiah Stevens. He, some of the things he does on the floor uh, are absolutely silly. I, I think Donovan Dent's really talented. I think he's next year's Mountain West point guard because some of these guys are going to move on. The Jalen Houses, the Mashburns, like those guys are getting older. Donovan Dent's kind of sliding his way in. That's a guy who's really talented too. And he's just now figuring out his game and where he can really be uh, effective. Isaiah Stevens knows exactly where to be effective. I don't think there's a slow to fast guy uh, or a better slow to fast guy in college basketball than Isaiah Stevens. And what I mean by that is your ability to accelerate when needed, his ability to change directions, his floor vision is elite. He's never in a hurry. He reminds me of a guy I played with in Europe named Rudy Memba. Uh, and people aren't going to know who that is, but it's it, the same level of athleticism, unbelievable quickness. Uh, doesn't get sped up on his jump shot, so he's shooting really good percentages. And some of these passes, Doster, that pop out on film yes. are silly. I mean, like coming around, pick and rolls, they're hard hedging. He sees the guy rolling, and he's making wraparounds the hedge guy pass and then swinging them hard enough to where they're getting to the rim, and he's finding some of these Division two transfers that he has on his team. Like Isaiah Stevens, as far as a passer is concerned, might be the best one that we've seen in the past – Five to ten years. I, I mean, some of these the, in their vision passes. They're not lucky. They're they're anticipating where the defense. You know who he's is up there be. with they're, for me? Tell me if you think this is that? crazy. The, the 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 I think the best passer that I can remember is probably Trey Young and Cade Cunningham in terms of the the pass range that they have coming out of ball screens. And Cade Cunningham was six seven, so it's a little bit different when you're that size. But Trey Young is a guy. He averaged like ten and a half assists in college. Yeah. He can make all of those passes. I don't want to put Isaiah Stevens in the same conversation as Trey Young because that's unfair to put on on anybody. It's, a, it's unfair. Plus, plus, small guards kind of falling out. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of that, that's kind of with the NBA. But like he's uh, Isaiah Stevens is special. Like when it comes to mm -hmm. like enjoy him at Colorado State. Enjoy him because th this year these this is like a once in every fifty to hundred years type of player that mm -hmm. you get at a place like that, and not just a place like that. A place like Duke. 
a place like the, the guy that's going to stay for five years, be all league all five years. Like he's special. And like, you have to enjoy a guy like that whenever he's around. All right. Jaden Ledee or great Osabar. You know what? I, this one's kind of unfair because Great didn't play great whenever he was at New Mexico. Uh, they were throwing double teams at him, and Utah State didn't move well around him uh, that particular game. Plus, Jalen House on the backside of you know trying to figure out passing lanes is a nightmare for anybody. Uh, Jaden Ledee, he's scoring it so well. I mean, this was a top 40, top 50 kid coming out of high school. But we were kind of expecting this to happen. It just never did, and now it's starting to. Like, his ability to step out a little bit, He's, he's beating guys in different ways this year. Back to the basket, he's able to beat you because he's so physically strong. He's stepping out. He's knocking down jump, jump shots. Uh, Big-time score. Big-time score, big-time rebounder, major-time athlete. That's kind of where I'm at with him. Uh, Osibor is an interesting kid because uh, he plays with a certain tenacity, which is what you love. I think he's going to make a lot of money for a, lot of, uh, for a long time, whether that be uh, – in Europe, playing at a Euro League level or somewhere back in you know the what? NBA, he's got that. He's got that European passport that matters. That's why. That's over there. That's why I say that. Yeah, that's why I say that. Like, I, and that's not a shot. I don't want that mm-hmm. to be misconstrued as a shot. Like, he's going to make a ton of money. Uh, he's an excellent passer. He can handle the ball. He turns around, and does his little Barkley dribble. If I had to pick one though for my team uh, this season, it's taken Ladie a, a little while to kind of adjust and understand to pick his spots. But I think Ladie's finally figured it out. I would go with him. Yeah, I, I think uh, I would probably agree with your assessment with with both of those. Um, mm-hmm. But to me, it's just kind of that that sums up how good this conference is overall. Because all four of those yeah. guys that we just mentioned, Donovan Dent, Isaiah Stevens, Jaden Ladie, and Great Osibor, are all good enough to be like Player of the Year candidates in pretty much any other league at this level, right? They're both they've all been awesome. All right, I want to ask you this now. Out of the six teams in this conference that we think have a chance to make it into the NCAA tournament, who is the best suited and best built to be able to make a run to the Sweet 16, to be able to do what San Diego State did last year? I'm not saying that you have to get to a national title game, but who's built to be able to make a lot of noise and pull off some upsets in the month of March? That's a tough one. Uh I, it's hard for me to just answer one. I like Utah State because they have older guards and they can control the tempo. Plus, great support just finds ways to be effective. And when you're not throwing manic double teams and making the game chaotic, I, he's he's really good because he can evaluate and he can pick spots. Uh, Utah State could win a game or two. Um, I, New Mexico is a wild one. That's a wild card to me uh, because they play a style that's so frantic and fun. However, if you have big guards that you're playing against to where you can kind of keep Jalen House at bay and not let him get you sped up, I think that's one of the things where they could either win two games and be the darling of the tournament, or they could get beat by 30 in the first round of the tournament. That's kind of what scares me about New Mexico, but because they play that sporadic and they play with so much energy and they generate momentum so quickly, that's a team that can make the Sweet 16 because of that. Um, Colorado State. Isaiah Stevens, you have him. They're underwhelming athletically, but they have Isaiah Stevens. And he is he is good enough to win a game or two by himself. So if I had to pick three, that would probably be the three. So and I'm I, leaving out San Diego State. Yeah, well, so what I was like, going to say is that I think I think you're right about Utah State. I think that they have the, – their ceiling is a little bit capped, if that makes sense. Um, that's what I, I yeah. agreed. Yeah. Yeah. I think that they can win a game. I think that the Sweet 16 isn't out of the question. That's possible. Boise State, I think, is good enough defensively that they can beat some teams that they match up well with. Um, Shibuzo yeah. Abo is a bad dude. Yes, he is. So was Omar Stanley. The That front yeah. line is, uh, it got, it went from being something where you're playing Tyson Degenhardt out of position to all of a sudden it's like, you got some, the three, four, five is, is real with that group. Yep. It's very and that's cool. without, that's without Max Rice really having the year that a lot of people thought. Mm-hmm. Like he was but awesome. He doesn't have to. Like that's the thing about. No, he doesn't have to. No, he doesn't, doesn't have, have to. to. Yeah, um, I, I think you were spot on about New Mexico. Like they just more than anybody They're else nuts. in this league. I think that they need the right match. You know what they are to me? Tell me if you think this is crazy. They're Kentucky light. A lot of guards. You know a lot of playmakers. They when they get rolling, they are almost impossible to beat on their best day. 
Um, but there are some things matchup wise that you can kind of take advantage a little bit of. And and we saw that a little bit yeah, last night. They're small. Losing. Yeah. They're small. They they play a lineup a lot of times in college basketball where you know Jalen Howe's listed at six foot or six one. That's generous. Jamal mm-hmm. Masper Jr. is a big time scorer, but he's really struggled with percentages because he had hand surgery and then he had a deep bone bruise and or a deep thigh bruise. And like now he's finally healthy. So I think his percentages will kept, keep up. And then they have Donovan Den out there a long time. So then you're you're playing, you know, six foot, six one, six one. And I know they're listed taller. Whoever's doing those rosters, it's generous. It's generous. But the, the, the good part about them, to you? six two. But you I am six two. two. I'm six two. That's a ridiculous claim. That's a ridiculous claim. Uh, but they, I tried to say like six four to Goodman, like when I was in high school. It's just a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the 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 good thing about them is they can get you so sped up, and they have uh, you know potential freshman of the year JT Toppin back there blocking mm-hmm. shots. They have Nelly Junior Joseph back there blocking shots. Who's you know it's ama- He was awesome against Utah State whenever I had that game. Uh, it, it's amazing. You know, he, he's been able to produce like he has. He's like at eight and seven, eight point seven boards. And it, he ha- he was having like student visa issues coming mm-hmm. back from Africa. And like he showed up October like 23rd, played in an exhibition game October 24th. And like, I, you know, given, you know, Rick and Richard probably run pretty similar stuff, but it still takes time to kind of just and, you know, mold in with your teammates. So they do have rim protection behind it. It'll be interesting to see, like, if there's a team with big guards, how New Mexico is, like, big, strong, physical guards that don't turn it over, how New Mexico would be able to generate that energy. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I agree with all of that. Colorado State, Isaiah Stevens might be the best point guard in the country. There, When you have the best point yes. guard in the country, there's always a chance that you could pull something off like that. I I still love the San Diego State team. I love the addition of, of Reese Dixon Waters and the improvement that he's made. I think that yep. they are – figuring things out on the defensive end of the floor. And I think they're better offensively this year than they have been in the past where they're a little bit more balanced. I think last year was just kind of like they're going to make you play a rugby match. And yeah. uh, as long as they can get to 60, you're not going to score 60 against them. And this year, I think that they can win some games in the 70s. So um, this year would... they can get to 67 points. Yes, <laughs> which is what they need. Um, yeah. I think it's kind of a cop out, but I feel like San Diego State is just it, they're the team that has the best chance to make the deepest run because I think there's the most talent there. They've done it before. They don't need to feel the pressure, and I think they're the most uh, the most balanced roster and and team of anybody in this league. Is that would you push back on any of that? I think balance deep and big when they go deeper in their bench. Mm-hmm. Like that's a big physical bunch. Dutcher's done a great job. And even with having to figure out defense this year, they're still top 20 in defense. So it's like, they're just not number one this year, which is, which is crazy. No, you know, Butler's back. Uh, Reese Waters, man, that kid's talented. It's finally like he got to San Diego state and his offense could open up a little bit. Shooting 37% from three, like, and he's athletic enough to get to the cup. I, I've been shocked at how good he's been. Because I saw him play at USC, and it was like there's a lot of talent at USC. They don't necessarily pop the ball around. We're, we're seeing it this year. Like, it's not a team really focused on sharing the basketball. San Diego State's more willing to do that, and as a result, Reese Waters has been better. So it, it really helps. And they're huge. They're big. And they're, not, they're not just tall. Like, they're big, wide-shouldered, huge dudes. Whoever the strength coach is there, like, Dutch, if you're listening to this, give them a raise. Like those yeah. dudes, it's like uh, you you watch the Villanova teams, right? And you just see them walk in, and they all have calves that look like they're going to explode out of their skin, and they just have muscles and veins popping everywhere. It's the same thing yeah. with San Diego State. Jane Ledee has shoulders that are like out to here. Yeah, yeah, he looks like a bodybuilder. He looks like he looks like an action figure. <laughs> he really does, man. <laughs> like like a prototypical action figure, like just huge. If you had to put together a wrestling match between action figure Jaden Ledee, this is taking, a, this is taking figure, a hard left. Action figure yeah. PJ Hall, who are you taking? Who's winning? I don't know. I think PJ's got got a little, you know, he's got a little dirty in him. Of course, you know, Ledee has to deal with that kind of thing every day at practice at San Diego State. I, I don't know. That'd be tough. That'd be a tough one. I think Ledee's got 30 pounds on him. Ledee's huge. Yes, he is. Uh, Danny Sprinkle coming yeah. to Utah State revamps the entire roster. 
Uh, he mm-hmm. was able to get like the the his his five and his point guard coming with him from Montana State, so that helps having that's some huge a little bit of of knowledge of the system. But seventeen to two, five and one, I, he's got to be at this point the coach of the year in that conference, right? I think he's close to coach. He's in the conversation for coach of the year nationally for me. <laughs> yeah, I think he's close uh, nationally. He, he's certainly up there. Uh, they didn't have a good showing in New Mexico because they couldn't stop anybody, but I, I think. That's going to get changed. Uh, his one thing that stood out about Sprinkle, his attention to detail was awesome. And sometimes you see, you know, shoot around. You know, you know, coaches just want to drive home the major points because you know it's the players playing. Well, not, not necessarily with Sprinkle. Like, hey man, you're two feet off. You need to switch. You, you you need to get there, or else because that can make all the difference in the world. Is that simple two feet? Some people kind of gloss over it. Uh, not Danny. His attention attention to detail was awesome. And his, I, I don't want to minimize the effect of bringing Darius Brown the second down and great Osibor down because that was as much as he was detail oriented. It was also very much a player led shoot around and a player led, you know, mm-hmm. what they're running offensively. And that's all Sprinkles doing by empowering those players. It, it was really cool to watch. Uh, they've got a lot of talent on that team. Uh, once you once they get Agbunk Polo back, like it's they have more depth. It, it's it's a really nice team, and his ability to get a lot out of Great Osibor is awesome because this was Sixth Man of the Year last year in the Big Sky, and now he's up for Mountain West Player of the Year. Like it, it's it, it says something about the development of his guys, and it also says something too. about but the ego. Like he was willing, he was this good. Well, not this good, but he was good enough to do more than he did last year, and he accepted that role. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's management and making sure the players know that they're appreciated and doing all that stuff. Like it's a huge thing. He fell into Mason false love. He fell into that one. Like, but like he was able to get the right guys in place and it, it's hard in the day of the portal to get the right blend of personalities and for their team, they certainly have it. Yeah. All right. Last thing I got for you, you got Nevada tonight. Uh, they are home against Colorado state. We are recording this on uh, Wednesday morning, your time. So, um, just keep that in mind. You probably, if you're listening to this, you might already know the answer to what happened in the game. But uh, Nevada's lost three in a row. One was at home against Boise State, no shame in that. One was at San Diego State, no shame in that. One was at Wyoming, uh, which looks bad on paper. But if you know anything about the Mountain West, if you know anything about Laredice, if you know anything about the highest place in the Mountain West, 7,000. 500 feet i think it is where you got to play it that's not an easy gym to go into it's part of what makes this league so tough what does nevada have to do to turn it around how do they stop this losing streak how do they get back on track you know what they they first of all they got to hit shots that that's numero uno secondly uh, you got to stop somebody you can't give up 98 points I, i know it's tough i know you're trying to play fast i know all that stuff but like, you can't give up 98 points. That's point blank, period. I, the guys have to shoot the ball a little bit better. I mean, Jared Lucas uh, is awesome. I, you're going to think this comparison's crazy. He kind of reminds me of me. It's like the same kind of ordeal. Like, one dribble pull-ups, like, coming off screens, getting your shoulders set, firing away. Like So that's why player. you know they got to guard a little bit better if he reminds you of you, huh? Ex- well, I mean, <laughs> ex- ex- exhibit A. Exhibit A. Uh, no, I, I think that, you know, they got to – find ways to just, you know, they got a good game out of Trey Coleman last couple of games. He went for his career high last uh, against Wyoming, hit 23. Uh, you got to get more out of Keenan Blackshear. I think that's what it comes down to. He's the head of the snake for that team. And he, you know, we're going to profile lead guards today leading into the game. And, you know, him against Isaiah Stevens, they, they're they both very good, but they do it in starkly different ways. Like Blackshear is more of a power guard. Get into the lane, put a shoulder on you, make the defense collapse because I'm bullying your point guard, and then I'll find guys. Uh, you you got to get a better game out of him. Uh, but really it comes down to, you know, how effective are you going to be running your offense and getting into spots? And then are they going to be able to guard well enough? Because you can't give up 98 points. They know that. Yep. Listen, T.O., it's always a pleasure, my man. Enjoy the game yeah. tonight. It's going to be a fun atmosphere. It's going to be a fun environment, and you know it's going to be a fun game if Nevada is playing. It's going to be a lot of points, a lot of great point guard play, and we know how much you love point guard play. Appreciate you being here, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Love the Mountain West.